I will try one of these. How does that there. No? <laughs> I will just talk loudly. <laughs> this one? Oh, oh, there. there. Yay. <laughs> oh, doesn't it feel good to be back here in this room celebrating together as a community, worshiping together? Thank you so much, band. Wow, that's great. It just feels good. Yes. Um, you know, Booth has for over 40 years been on the land of Treaty 1 territory, the home of the Ishnabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota and Dene people, and the homeland of the Red River Métis. And we're so grateful for all their contributions to our well-being. Um, their example in generosity, where our water comes from, Shoal Lake 40, um, their example of treaty and relationships and friendship and cooperation. So we acknowledge that. We're thankful for that. Before we get into our short little chapel time today, I just want to make sure I take the opportunity to, make, to let everybody know about what's going on. This week, of course, this is Welcome Week. We have one more event taking place tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. For those of you who like pancakes, you're gonna wanna be in the Booth Bistro at 10 a.m. Our student council is bringing out their griddles and all the toppings, and they're gonna serve a fabulous pancake breakfast for us. Um, through the month of September, a number of notable things are taking place. Uh, student Council is still looking for five positions on Student Council, so um, we're going to be holding elections towards the end of the month. If you know of any students who want to get involved, or if you are a student who wants to get involved, please talk to one of the council members, or Matt Peters and myself. Um, we're taking some time in the third week to, uh, to reflect and talk about a very, the very important topic of preventing sexual violence, so you'll see a number of posts that will be going up and all learn about some of the resources that we have. And then to, at the very end of the month, we're getting ready for our National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. And we will be promoting different events probably in our larger community that you can be involved in. So just be thinking forward to all of those things. I do want to address a really important topic, I think, at least for those of us in this room, and that is chapels. <laughs> Chapels going forward, how are we going to do that? Oh, I think so many of us want to see these kinds of gatherings on a regular basis, whatever that looks like, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or whatever. But we need volunteers. So this is my general call to you if you're interested in helping, not all the time, but maybe on certain specific dates or weeks, want to help us put together a time for our own community to come together in this way, um, please talk to me. Um, I really I, I'm, I'm anxious for that. The other thing that I wanted to mention, and I hope it's not too soon, we can never find it, <laughs> because Student Council has a real passion for putting together some worship nights this year. Hi. Yeah. So we're <laughs> hoping our students are going to be um, communicating more about that as the term goes on, and uh, just invite you to, to support them. Okay, I want to move away from here so we can move, make room for other things, but let's just start with a short word of prayer. Creator God, thank you for this season of transition, for this season of newness and beginning. I pray that as we move forward from here, that you would draw us to yourself in humility. Help us to Offer our desires, our wills, to your will to build your kingdom. And help us to live into the hope of what you have for Booth in this coming year. We praise you for your love, compassion, and also your tremendous power in our lives and in our community. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Bant, and lead us in some more worship. Well, good morning. 
morning, everybody. It is so good to see you all here this morning. It is such an honor and a privilege to be able to come here and worship the Lord together, isn't it? And we're going to sing a song this morning, and you cannot sit down for this song. Right? <laughs> you have to stand up. I want you to be free as we worship God this morning. The words will come up. He is on it. <clears throat> I want you to be free as we worship God together this morning. If you want to dance, if you want to clap your, hand, your hands, if you want to do a handstand or something, just be careful, but you are free to do that. All right, so as we worship together, uh, we're going to sing a cool song, a Caribbean mel- uh, medley that we're going to do together. And yeah, let's just be free as we worship God together.
Hall Chapel of the 2023-2024 academic year. It's my pleasure to introduce the Reverend Dr. Rob Freeman, President of Moose University College. Rob arrived in Canada last month with his family, partner and wife Vanessa, daughter Sierra, and son Brandon from Australia, where for 10 years he served as president and principal of Nazarene Theological College in Melbourne, Australia. Dr. Freeman holds a PhD in New Testament and Biblical Theology from the University of Manchester in the UK. He's a New Testament scholar specializing in Pauline studies. He's an ordained uh, elder in the Church of the Nazarene and has served for more than 25 years in pastoral ministry, teaching, research, and writing. Please welcome Dr. Fringer as he comes to address and mark the occasion of a new academic year. leading us into this space and into this time. It is great to be here. It is great to, uh, to not only be here, but to be here, to be with each other and to be uh, together in the presence of the Lord and in this recognition of the journey that we share uh, during this time uh, for each one of us. Uh, our lives have crossed uh, and we walk this time together. And we need to be aware of that. Look around. Look around at the people uh, that are here with you today and here on this journey with you. Uh, it is significant that we learn to be a community together uh, and to share with each other both the highs and the lows uh, of this journey that we have before us. And there will be highs and there will be lows, as you all know. Uh, but it is exciting to start a new year, uh, and obviously there's a lot going on with the start of the new year, and hopefully throughout this year uh, you will hear, hear more about that. But my time is short, so I'm going to move into uh, what I want to share with us today. I want to read from 1 Corinthians 1 and the first nine verses. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth. He says, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those in every place who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both theirs and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. As you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't know how much you know about this church, but this church in Corinth was not your ideal church. They had all kinds of struggles, all kinds of... Uh, of issues, really, and Paul writes two letters that we have to this church. We know of two other letters that Paul wrote that we do not have access to, and letters uh, that were written back from the church to Paul. Paul spent a year and a half with this uh, church in one of his missionary journeys, uh, and so significant relationship over a significant amount of time. And probably more than any other church, he struggled with this church. This first epistle that he writes to the Corinthians uh, uh, talks about all kinds of issues, issues of division, issues of sexual immorality, issues of believers taking other believers to court, division on how they worship, division uh, on uh, issues around worship, 
the Lord's table, uh, the fellowship that is taking place, uh, how things and people are being viewed from an economic standpoint and from a racial standpoint. I mean, all kinds of issues and division going on, even some believing that Paul's own apostleship and leadership is being questioned in this epistle. I mean, it was a difficult church. Divided and dysfunctional would, would be good terms to describe this church. And yet, as Paul begins his letter, did you hear how he referred to these people? Let me read again just the references he gives as he refers to this group of Christians. He calls them the church of God. He calls them those who are sanctified. He says those who are called saints. Those who have joined together with all those who call upon the name of the Lord. Those filled with the grace of God. Those who are enriched in Christ in every way, in speech and in knowledge. Those who have had the testimony of Christ strengthened among them. And those not lacking any spiritual gifts. As a Pauline scholar who knows a lot about this church, I'm like, who is he talking about? He's not talking about this group. Maybe, maybe someone took the intro from another letter and stuck it onto this one. That's the impression you might get. Some scholars believe that this is just part of the, you know, the niceties of the introduction to a letter. You know, you just you kind of uh, say these things because they're part of what you have to say when you start a letter or start a correspondence. Others think that Paul's trying to butter them up before he throws them in the firing pan because things get quite rough as we move from this place. In fact, the first nine verses of this epistle look so different than the rest of this epistle. So what is Paul doing here? I don't think it's just the niceties, and I don't think it is him trying to butter them up. I think there's something much more significant that speaks to us even today. The reality is that Paul is speaking the future into the present. Paul is shaping their identity, not around who they have been or who they currently are acting like but around the kingdom of God, around a new identity that they have as followers of Christ. And it is a beautiful thing as you think about this and think about this reality. You see, we have choices that we make every single day as we interact with one another, not only in this community, but in every interaction in the communities in which we walk in life each day. We have so many choices about how we will interact with others. And even before the interactions, how we will view other people. It is so easy for us in our culture and in our climate to make these judgments upon who people are based on their appearance, based on what we've heard about them or someone else has said, and even based on the experiences we have had with them. And you can say, yes, I've had those experiences. I know those people. I know how difficult they are. But maybe some people are saying that about you as well. Maybe you've made some mistakes. Maybe I've made some mistakes as well along the way and hurt certain people and maybe not addressed it in ways that I could have or should have. And I can choose to cling on to those things and choose to continue treating people as they have treated me, judging people as they have judged me, continuing to justify my actions in my own sight and in the sight of others. Or I can take a different perspective. You see, it is important how we see others. Paul has uh, these amazing words in a little bit later in 2 Corinthians where he says that they once viewed Christ from a human point of view or according to the flesh, but no longer do they view him that way. Because if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed. Behold, everything has been made new. The reality of who we are as the church, of, of those who are 
not only in Christ, but who are filled with the Holy Spirit, is that we are new people, part of a new community that should look very different from the ways of being and doing that we see around us. And yet for so long and so often, the church in our societies have not looked much different from the world around us. And we have continued to fall into these patterns of judging people and treating people based on exterior realities rather than based on realities of how Christ views them, how they are viewed from the perspective of God. And even yourself, let me start there for just one quick moment. You are created in the image of God. You are beautiful with all, not in spite of your brokenness, not in spite of your scars, not in spite of your histories, but with all of those things. You are beautiful and God loves you. And as you come into relationship with him, he calls you a child of God. He invites you to walk deeply into that relationship and to find comfort, not in your own view of yourself, but in his view of you, in that God identity. And so if it matters how we understand and view ourselves, it also matters how we understand and view others, doesn't it? There's a there's an a anonymous quote that I heard many, many years ago, and it continues to stick with me, and you've probably heard it before. It goes something like this. There are enough people who see the world as it is, what we need are more people who see the world as it can be. And, and let me personalize that a little bit more. There are enough people who see others as they are. What we need are more people who see others as they can be. Here is part of the reality of what Paul is doing here and what we need to continue to do as the church. Paul is not just making up things about this people that are untrue. Paul is seeing with fresh eyes who they are in Christ and who they are in God. All people have been created in the image of God and are worthy of the love of God and are worthy of the dignity of being looked in the eye, of being spoken to in grace, of being given the benefit of doubt of being given second chances and third chances and fourth chances. And sometimes they are so beaten up by their own actions or by the actions of others around them that they can't see any good in themselves. And sometimes it takes us as the church to walk alongside them and help them see who they truly are, who they can be as a result of what Christ has done. How do we begin to speak the future realities into the present in the lives of the people around us? We speak about education for a better world here, and that is part of who we are striving to be. But education for a better world begins with me, and it begins with me having a perspective of this world and what this world is and can be, and speaking the realities of the future into the present until they become a reality for the here and now. How are we involved, not only in the big decisions, but in the small choices that we make to speak the future into reality? We are a people of hope. We are a people of love. We are a people of compassion. We are a people of justice. And if that is not seen in those small choices and decisions of how we talk to one another and how we view one another and how we respect one another, then it will not be made in those larger choices, at least not in a holistic and lasting way. We need to come confessing as a community that we have not always done that well. And yet, recognizing that together, and with a lot of grace along this journey, we can do it, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can begin to see not what is on the surface, but what lies deep within each one of us, within the image of God, 
and help others to embrace that worth that we all long for and that we all need. May we be that kind of people. May it start again. May it start with me. And if that means I need to go and be reconciled to one of you, then I hope that I will make that choice to do that. And I hope that if I don't realize that, someone in love will come and not in a judgmental way, but in a caring way, come alongside and say, I think you've offended. I think you've hurt. I think you've done wrong in this situation. And let's work through it. Because it's not about being right or wrong in the end, is it? I would tell you, I believe the goal is relationship. Relationship with Christ, but then also relationship with one another. That evidences the reconciliation and restoration that God has called us as the people of God to and to all humanity to. So walk into that space this year. Walk into that space into your classrooms, into your interactions with your professors, your interactions with other students. Walk into that into your churches. Walk into that into your homes and into your various communities that God has called you into, that we might see a better world. We might be a better world for others. Amen? I have four members of the community that are going to come forward. We want to pray for this coming year in very specific ways. Uh, and I'll call them all up. Uh, and I don't think there's a particular order necessarily. Uh, are these mics working? Everybody yeah. has to turn their mute button. Okay. And then I will close us at the end of that time. Oh, very good. Actually, why don't we all stand? Let us pray. And let's pray together. Father God, we are so grateful to be able to be in this space. God, we feel your presence around us. We feel the love that you have for us. God, I just pray that uh, you will just bless the school year. Uh, specifically, Lord, I pray that you will look over each and every student that's here. God, I just pray that in moments when students might be overwhelmed, when they might be fearful, they might be scared, they might not know what to do next. God, I just pray that you will just bring your presence so close to them. And God, that you'll just Give them the strength, give them the reassurance that they need uh, to know that they will be okay and that you are with them. God, we love you. Uh, that's why we're here. That's why we're all shared together in this time. God, we're here to glorify who you are and to thank you for who you are. So God, again, just be with everybody, be with the students. And God, just thank you for these moments that we can share.